thank you for being part of today's session. Um, we have a webinar hosted together by Nice IT Management Solutions and Ergo. Uh, my name is Christian Heidkamp, Product Director for Nice, and with me uh, is Thomas from from the Ergo Group. So for today, we prepared a couple of really interesting topics for you. So uh, and uh, to keep this in a structured way and deliver this uh, in the best possible way, we will start with a short introduction that you know who we are, who's presenting this content to you. And next, we'll give you all the updates about our latest release of the Active 365 Management Pack. Plus, then we have a section about Microsoft Dynamics, CRM monitoring, and uh, we'll wrap up with, with question and answer then. So let me start with a short introduction here about Nice IT Management Solutions. While most of you already know us, uh, there are typically always a couple of new folks on the on the call. So uh, and um, so we are traditionally working on System Center Operations Manager to uh, monitor business applications and databases, infrastructure, and so on. We're doing this since the year 2000, and uh, soon being 20 years around of doing that. And just in recent time, uh, we uh, joined together with Ergo together to help us develop a solution for our dynamics monitoring. And uh, with that, I'd like to hand over to uh, Thomas to give us a quick background on, on Ergo. Uh, good afternoon, and thanks everyone for joining. Thank you, Christian. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, Ireland, uh, um, Ergo Islands, um, one of Ireland's leading uh, cloud and managed service partners that says on the slide, so there's a little, little, little bit of background about the scale, how long um, Ergo have been in business um, in terms of uh, revenue and in terms of staff. There we go. Um, but some of, the, uh, some of the services that Ergo uh, specialize in and the reason that we've partnered and supported uh, Nice IT with the Dynamics is we are a very experienced leading in Dynamics 365 implementations, um, um, along with uh, lots of other services you can see on the screen. I'm not going to talk you through those, um, but we are a, a true uh, Microsoft uh, implementation partner, along with other services um, Ergo offers, such as uh, uh, managed print services. Uh, we also have a subsidiary which does um, all Microsoft licensing. Um, so. We provide um, the expertise and skills in the Dynamics and Azure Arena to support the uh, the nice IT uh, monitoring solutions. Okay, great, Thomas. Uh, so let's go on and uh, and and jump just to into the the topics we want to discuss today. So the Active 365 Management Pack. So there are a couple of news, and uh, one of the news probably you see already on this slide. We we changed the name a bit of the product. So um, we have released 3.0 out now, uh, which we present in this, uh, this release. And, uh, and we had the version before 2.0, which was active O365 management pack. So and in, in that version, we actually removed the O in front of the 365. So um, also, you have might noticed over the over the last month that Microsoft is also changing more towards Microsoft 365 and uh, putting that more in front of everything and uh, more having like Microsoft services part of that so and alongside with that we decided to to drop the o and just rename this a bit but under the hood uh, the uh, the architecture um the, the basic architecture we had with with the scom in place and the the collector so to say uh is is still there and i i will not go into depth of the the architecture that there are other webinars out there you might go and look at so I, I more focus on on what's new in this release so in talking less about the, the basic functionality and so on we did a number of larger changes in this release and uh, that's what i really want to focus on and um, the major change, or the, one of the largest changes, actually, is the support for modern authentication. Until version 2.0, we, we just were supporting basic authentication. And now, with this release, we're introducing modern authentication. It, it might sound like an easy step or like just a change, but actually, it means to, uh, to go through every piece of every metric, every line of code, 
and ensuring that we can support now the, the OAuth tool, also as a reference to authentication method. Um, there are pros and cons. So um, we still fully support the basic authentication. And that's also with respect that not everybody requires the modern authentication to be used at this time. Uh, and uh, if you currently using the product and you're using basic authentication, you can have a very easy process to upgrade. So you can just like put this new version in place and continue the, the setup efforts and everything you have done so far based on the basic authentication. And then at one point in time after the upgrade, you can, can flip over and using modern authentication. And we've also done this in a way that we haven't uh, duplicated all monitors and rules in SCOM, but uh, we have made each and every rule and monitor configurable to allow you to use that either with modern or basic authentication. However, you have to do the, the, the flip at, at once for all the metrics, but you can do that with, with a simple import of a management pack. So there's a management pack now included. It's called like modern authentication. If you put that in place, it will basically update all the overrides for the monitors and rules to use modern authentication. So and if you say, well, I actually want to go back to basic authentication, that's easy, also very easily possible. So that gives us a, is a bit of a, so to say, easy migration path for you and also for us easier way to support you in case there are problems with the uh, modern authentication because it's modern and it's new. And uh, also at Microsoft side, uh, there, are, there are issues we have to work around um, because you have to understand that we're using the Graph API and the, the Azure APIs in most places and uh, there are uh, also type of new and uh, not um, bug free, so to say and constantly updated. So that is one of the, the challenges if you develop an application for Azure or Graph, uh, you're working against a moving target, so to say, because in traditional world, maybe you had an Oracle database or an exchange server, that exchange server was on one version and that we could quite well rely on an EWS API to be there in a, in a released version, while with the Graph API, this does not apply so uh, it, 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 it means more testing for us and to ensure that we are compatible. However, with modern authentication, we bring like all the good thing like MFA to you and we are supporting Microsoft's secure good practice authentication methods. Um, at the same time, uh, it requires additional configuration effort on your side when you trial or, or test the solution or use it in production. Um, because you have to go through a number of steps and I uh, will not discuss these steps. We have updated documentation. I will highlight this in a moment as well. But just for you uh, to use this uh, product in a smooth way, um, we have added a lot of screenshots and uh, also a troubleshooting section to allow you to set this up um, in, in your environment. So. Uh, Modern authentication uh, is new to the product and uh, we uh, had to, the main driver behind of this graph API to use was the, the next feature or one of the next features I will show you is the Teams monitoring and as well new SharePoint monitoring, OneDrive monitoring as well exchange uh, online monitoring. We're using in most cases now the graph API for exchange for example, the mail flow metrics have been changed to use the graph API and as well uh, some of the uh, platform monitoring of, uh, of the Office platform or Microsoft 365 platform uh, is using the Graph APIs. And that's actually where we also will, will do more in future, uh, bringing more details from the actual Office or Microsoft 365 platform into SCOM. So um, let's go to the next feature here. Um, this is uh, the GeoProxy support. So that's been there before. Um, so most of you probably familiar with that who have trialed the product or looked at the product. So um, or using the product here, it's uh, we have done a couple of changes to this to make it more robust as well and have more metrics supporting it. So not for all of you this might be applicable, but the idea of uh, GeoProxy support is the, the real outside-in monitoring. 
So let's assume you are a company uh, located in North America with branch offices in, in, in China, Europe, and uh, like South, uh, South America. And uh, you have these different branch offices. And in this case, we assume they would use their own internet breakout. And, uh, and then from that uh, internet breakout, they would reach to your North American tenant. To ensure that the connection and the user experience, so the end user experience from your, your colleagues in South America, Europe, and Asia or is uh, according to the SLAs you expect from Microsoft, you can deploy those uh, proxies to those locations and from there monitor the accessibility uh, to your tenant. And that's done through all the synthetic ways we offer in either being exchanged, SharePoint, like if somebody up and downloads SharePoint files or uh, uses a team chat now, so or just logs on to, to their mailbox and sends an email. That's all, these all metrics offer or monitors and rules offer the, the support for uh, geo proxies right now. So um, there's a white paper that we provided as well in the quick start guide is, a, is an intro section for that. And uh, this is not a service we provide at this point in time. So it is something that is left to you a tool to set up or most customers actually have already proxies in place. These are just HTTPS proxies that can be used, and uh, the HTTPS proxies is, is just a simple either appliance or hosting on Linux or other operating system that, that passes through the data. Uh, yeah, so that that is the the geo proxy support that has been uh, officially a part of the product as well. So let's go to next Teams chat. So Microsoft Teams monitoring. It's been a long story. So let me start a bit, going a bit back. So how do we got to that? So um, about a year back, we had a working prototype for Skype, actually, for Skype monitoring. So, and we do, did Skype uh, calls, uh, quality of service, and uh, a lot of those um, um, measurements and, and um, telemetrics you, you would be interested in typically are, are important to, to look at. So, and, um, at that time, Microsoft more or less stopped maintaining their, their API for, for Skype. That's the, the Link uh, API that's been there since, uh, or in the state of 2010, basically, from the Microsoft communication server at that time, and later got the Skype server. And, uh, and at this point, uh, we saw that it is going to be very difficult to, uh, to really provide an end-to-end -end user monitoring for Skype because at one point uh, there is, is the issue that we need to have a maintained API sets to work with. So um, with that then we actually went to Microsoft and, and asked about their recommendation and obviously the message was pretty clear that we, uh, that we go to, to the uh, that we go to the Teams monitoring and, and leave uh, Skype aside as, as most of you and most of the customers we talk to actually have uh, actually have um, not the need for Skype or have the need for Skype but uh, actually moving to Teams. So we took that step forward and, and implemented Teams monitoring. So Teams monitoring, what does it mean? So obviously you, you probably use call, either Skype for call, uh, Teams for calling, you use it for chat or any other items um, that, is, that is important for you. And uh, with that, we um, had to focus on what is available from Microsoft. So in terms of the Graph API, so Graph API is the one API that can currently be used. Uh, for accessing and we had discussion with the development team of, of Microsoft and uh, typically they go through a, um, an alpha or a technology preview uh, phase uh, so where we are part of the, the top program where we get early access and then we see what's coming and then they go to a public uh, beta release and then to a GA release and uh, but in GA there were only very very limited uh, functionalities for Teams chat or Teams at all available. So Microsoft, although they say Graph API is the one that you should go to, the functionalities being there quite limited as of now. So with that we can only do limited checks. So um, which is like creating Teams, creating channels. So we have automated that. So that is a possibility to automate the creation of, of teams and uh, channels and then also 
have a bot, so to say, that starts chatting. So it's a it's a it's a process that is triggered by by SCOM and uh, in a certain interval goes out there and uh, and and adds messages to the um, to the chat and 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 measures the the time it takes to post to the chat and read the message. So so to say between between two users that keep chatting and we measure the time. So that is the uh, that's the key functionality we're doing. With that, you have a, a reliable SLA and information if your chat team functionality is working. Obviously, uh, there were quite a number of uh, requests for uh, what about Skype teams calling? I, I, I need to know like my quality of service, my, my jitter between teams calls and such. Um, and we would love to do that, to be honest. Would love to do that, but at this point, uh, the the APIs are not yet available. And uh, two weeks ago, uh, the Microsoft Ignite uh, conference, the yearly conference, took place where we've been exhibiting from Nice and had a lot of meetings with also with the product team. And uh, there's good news that this is going to be added within the, within the next year or actually a couple of months when this functionality also becomes part of the graph API and can then be used. So that is clearly the, the road forward uh, with team support where we will add additional uh, features and monitors, rules to provide additional tests around teams. All right, so there's a, a, there's a couple of documentation sets we provide. So this is the reference guide. So there we provide the monitors and rules uh, that we added for Teams monitoring right now. There's obviously new discovery. You need to grant specific um, API permissions and so on. But in short, um, just the reference guide is the documentation where we list all the functionality around Teams right now. So I just see there was a question to a slide before around a uh, maximum number of geo proxies uh, and uh, is this correct? So this is a, we, we, we have a tenant based concept. So we, we discover tenants or so when for service providers who basically request dozens of tenants, the scalability is a bit different than, or the, the answer is a bit different than for, for one tenant with, with a number of geo proxies. So, so as of now, uh, the uh, we, well, we still have uh, a scalability problem here, and I'll get a bit of a details as well to that. So let me go back to answer that question in more detail. So here, um, the question is like, how many um, branch offices, so to say, geo proxies you can have? Currently, we look around 10 to 20 geo proxies. This depends a bit on the amount of traffic you run through and the location of those. The challenge here is that from our sides, we can support dozens or even more of geo proxies. The, proxy, the problem is the tenant actually, because if we, from the SCOM side, uh, trigger, uh, let's say, lots of file uploads for SharePoint from 10 different locations, uh, Microsoft still regard like one account uploading files from all over the world to the tenant and regard this as a type of an attack, not the denial of service attack, but it will come from a many different locations with the same account to the tenant, which is a is an untypical structure of, of a specific user request. And um, we then will not get locked or something, that's not a problem, but the tenant or the graph API will throttle us. So that the, the throttling occurs where then the requests on hold until they're passed through. So the, the challenge again is here to, to work around the throttling that occurs if we increase the number of geo proxies uh, beyond a certain number. So currently that's between 10 and 20, eventually more depends a bit on, on the number of requests, the, the interval you use uh, um, for, for doing that. And uh, we are working on a concept to, to fan this out to a number of other systems or accounts uh, so that the throttling will not occur. At the same time, this was also a topic we addressed with Microsoft, and Microsoft uh, is working on a, on a new throttling concept that we can um, exclude throttling or we can uh, do a different prioritization, or it's called batching, actually, where we, we batch requests together to submit them together against the graph API layer. Uh, and with that, we can then allow more uh, more graph API requests to be submitted to the tenant from 
from one endpoint, so to say, or from one from user account. So that's what we're working on. Uh, but right now, we still have a limitations on here uh, for 10 to 20 geo proxies. So, uh, and uh, if you have specific requirements for more of them, please come then and, and talk to us. So uh, we might have a solution or get Microsoft involved to, to get that resolved. All right, so um, let's move on to SharePoint monitoring. So um, we've added a couple of metrics or with them, uh, so monitors and rules. So uh, this is around IS latencies uh, and request durations. Uh, and uh, we also fully support the Graph API for SharePoint monitoring. So uh, um, IS latency, uh, in this case, uh, so monitors the uh, the time in, in milliseconds, uh, the SharePoint needs um, with a queued request. So typically it's close to three milliseconds, which is typical, but it takes longer than you can have another triggered here as well. So, and the request duration is, uh, is, the, is the processing time of the page. So it's, a, it's a rendered and that typically is, has also a time frame. It's healthy around like uh, 200 millisecond to one second, but uh, if it takes longer then you can also have a have an alert uh, triggered on that end. I'll give you a little impression in the demo in a moment. Well, let's go on. So uh, the improved high availability support is in there. So uh, we have already in the past had a, a resource pool where you can add one or more management servers to that. And then in case you're patching one of the management servers or it goes down in the, uh, the, the workflows and the monitoring um, the monitoring activities falls over to the other management server. So that's been added and there's a white paper and an advanced guide for details if you need that. There is uh, some specific setup required but it's not supported. Documentation enhancement is, uh, so there's a setup flow we added so uh, you can, should be quite easily run through the, the steps in the, in the quick start guide um, to get everything set up. Um, then the advanced guide is there for more complex setups. So in case you uh, want to do specific configurations, then we have the uh, reference guides, as I mentioned, and there's a, a guide for dynamic CRM as well. So if, you, if you're setting that up as well as a, as a component. Um, so um, that's about it. And I would just show you a bit uh, action in a moment. So let me just go over this. Um, so let's see. Um, So um, the uh, SCOM console here uh, you're seeing has currently two tenants in monitoring and within each of the tenants we have the, the different services discovered right now except Dynamics, so Dynamics we'll, we'll cover in a moment. So and uh, from here we have the, the teams monitoring, so we have accounts assigned to that, we have OneDrive monitoring, SharePoint monitoring and so on. And uh, this, this teams for example, can go in here, open the Health Explorer. Currently, it's healthy, and there's a there's a roll-up monitor for the availability of a specific user, and uh, it more measures basically the the Teams chat functionality. And uh, if the the chat messages aren't going back and forth in a in a expected time interval, then um, or in a timeout period, then there there's an alert on this. Um, Next SharePoint exchange as well. I will not dr drill down in all of the details. Uh, we have still the data centers on here that I use currently. This is a West Europe tenant and mailboxes are located in Amsterdam and Austria. So we discover and monitor from that perspective as well. Um, all right, let's also have a quick uh, look at SharePoint. Uh, so the SharePoint logon latency I mentioned, which has been added here. So it gives some uh, information on, on milliseconds here uh, for the different uh, objects we discover. So we have a number of, of users that are in there on, and, and added for monitoring. And then again, we have two different tenants, which then also produce different response times. One is a, is a tenant that still is using hybrid uh, logon, so meaning by ADFS, and one is using Azure ID as a logon mechanism. Request duration, same information here. So uh, if you see spikes and uh, it, you can very easily correlate this then to user calls coming in from your help desk or you can also uh, bring this on a big wall 
uh, to see uh, if request durations of your SharePoint online farm is experiencing any performance issues. Obviously, if there's an entire outage, uh, we have the SharePoint online uh, overview here with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the actual monitoring. And the, the number of sites are here that also given given information. Right, so um, with this, I think we prepared a poll. Um, would need to ask my colleague to bring up the poll. Um, Eva, if you online can bring up the poll, so uh, then we can uh, do that. Well, otherwise, I'll, I'll just continue while we have the poll being up then. Okay, poll should be showing now. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes for uh, completing the poll. So uh, why do we uh, will we do this poll? Is uh, it's just like to get a better understanding where we should focus our uh, efforts in terms of development. So uh, we've covered Exchange. I would say to most of the requirements that are there, there are a couple of other ones which go into Azure AD, where like for example attachment processing. So uh, where we where we have some items on the on the backlog. So sometimes emails that have large attachments or specific attachment are delivered delayed, especially if they're coming from outside of the organization. So we, we plan to have some monitoring out that if, if attachments are being holed up uh, through uh, Azure uh, to be analyzed. Um, but with that exchange, we have done most of the things. Uh, but SharePoint and OneDrive um, and Teams, obviously, uh, will, will in the, over the next month, uh, increasingly invest again for bringing new features in there. Um, but for the, that, it would be helpful for us to understand uh, where where your primary service are there that you use. So, uh, and uh, yeah, so just pick if if uh, let's see if well we have dynamics is there. Is Power BI we do not have today. So uh, this is is this something we are we are looking at. So uh, as well we as AAD Connect, uh, which is also on the roadmap. All right, I think we can close the poll again. I'll, I'll just continue here with, uh, with sharing. All right. So uh, in the next step, we'll actually continue and uh, talk a bit about Dynamics 365 CRM monitoring. So uh, I'll, thanks, Eva, for showing the, the results. So uh, we'll just can hide them and go on. So uh, and with Dynamics, actually, I would actually do a quick start off and then hand over uh, to my colleague actually as well. So, um, and um, Dynamics actually started out engaging with a couple of customers through Office 365 monitoring. So they came and said, well, we actually also have Dynamics. What can you do about that? And was and from NICE, we actually said, well, we actually use Dynamics ourselves. We are more like a user, but sure, we, we, we actually had issues where email was pending or it incorrectly accounts configured. So would Great to to have that information. So, and that's where we got uh, Argo on board. And uh, I think uh, the best who can give a bit of background of the year is is Tom. So, uh, Tom, uh, why don't you uh, walk us a bit through the the next couple of slides? Certainly. <coughs> Thank you, Christian. Um, in terms of uh, what is uh, Dynamics CRM, I can see from the poll that you know, some of you are already uh, using that. So, it's obviously uh, Microsoft's customer relationship management um, solution. For this purpose, it's, it's the online version, not the on-prem version. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we've taken a, an approach in terms of Dynamics uh, 365 of, of an out-of-the-box type implementation um, in terms of building uh, the model, and, and we'll demo that a little bit in a, in a few moments' time. The uh, Christian raised the point around why is monitoring dynamics a good idea, and and from a, a systems integrator and, and implementation partner, um, we've been doing this for um, uh, last 15 years, 16 years, I think it is, with with Microsoft CRM now, and you and we've got to learn where are the pain points in terms of not the implementation, but certainly the management and the ongoing uh, support in terms of the uh, the end user. Uh, community so that's around you know I've done something in CRM and it hasn't updated or it hasn't created a record or I sent an email hasn't hasn't been been received various things all around uh, the, the general use of of dynamics so <clears throat> what we what we've done is build a module into 
D365, Dynamics 365, um, and uh, working with uh, Nice IT and, and Christian's team, we now have an end-to-end -end, um, flow, so you can trigger a, a monitor, you can trigger a plan in Dynamics, and that will return you results based on the state or status of that that plan. And what we've done, as I say, we've taken an out-of-the-box approach. So uh, every Dynamics 365 solution is going to be uh, slightly different. It's going to have its own uniqueness about it. Um, but what we've done as a starting point is is provide four uh, plans, um, and that's account, workflow, activity, and contact health. And we refer to them as health plans. Um, and we'll, we'll go into a little bit and show you what those those mean. But for those of you that understand uh, Dynamics, it's predominantly built around activity management and workflow or processes. So those two areas alone will give you um, the capability of monitoring a lot of what's going on in your Dynamics uh, stack, whether that's from a, a data flow perspective or data quality perspective, um, or comes via the email um, and activity uh, perspective and what we've done as well <clears throat> working with uh, with nice guys is we have two levels or two plans available feature sets so we have standard plans and the standard plans will um, monitor specific uh, fields and areas of of dynamics 365 um, but you cannot you cannot alter those there there a you download that plan you use that plan consume that plan but that will give you um, a, a good amount of monitoring but it's fixed in terms of what you can monitor and the pro plans will allow you as a as a management person to a system admin to go in and create your own unique uh, plan so where the uniqueness of your CRM implementation um, requires it you can create your own um, unique monitoring plans um, and become and and they're very powerful um, very extensive um, and we can um, help and assist in terms of implementing anything if you if you want to go down the pro plan route then by all means reach out to Christian um, or nice and we can we can support and assist you in in doing that can we go next slide yeah so next slide I'll also give you control oh, you got it. The thank you yep there you go go ahead <clears throat> thank you so just to give you uh, a high level overview of the architecture we, uh, we've got in place so left hand side we've got scum um, I, I'm not an expert in scum at all so Christian can uh, take you through any components on that but we the the real um, piece of the uh, ergo solution starts in the d365 monitoring web service so we have a uh, monitoring uh, web service sits in Azure and that is connected to your Dynamics uh, 365 uh, instance um, and you can have multiple instances and multiple web services connected and obviously that's then just configured back to SCOM so um, within our Office 365 uh, tenant we've got Dynamics 365 we've got sales marketed service and we now have D365 monitoring as a module um, it's just a, a solution that you would normally just download install that solution there's a user guide that takes you through configuration um, to make sure it's secure and only uh, the right uh, SCOM service can talk to that web service um, but we have a monitoring configuration app and a plan result app and I'm going to talk talk you through those in uh, with a real demo in a second and those um, plans monitoring plans are triggered via SCOM so SCOM will actively trigger that plan and that plan will run and it will return a set of results and those results are then reportable back in SCOM so one of the pain points that's always been with Microsoft uh, Dynamics is you have to go and look it's a reactive um, you have to go and look and find out where your your problem or your error or your failed workflow uh, your blocked email wherever that might be what uh, this solution allows you to do is, is proactively manage that via a single um, place, which is your SCUM, and get your results back into there. So you then you are proactively managing uh, that, that potential issue and going off and investigating, uh, hopefully before your users even notice there's a problem or before it gets reported to you. So you're um, proactively fixing or keeping that service up and running. Okay. Great, so shall I switch over to the demo? Uh, 
Yeah, let's get let's go to the demo, Christian. Yeah. Okay. Good. So uh, let me switch over and uh, go to. Um, yep. Yeah, here you go. Uh, okay. Let me make sure you have a control. Let me pass it over to you again. Uh, there we go. Okay, I've got control. Thank you. Um, so just to uh, uh, just to take a step back, so we've got our monitoring um, module uh, app installed, and I'll take you down through that. So this is our monitoring configuration. Um, so in our configuration, we have um, we basically give it a name. The name is just a, gen uh, a generic name, but uh, it just needs the name. The key really here is this application key that ensures that, and this is a 64-bit uh, GUID, but it just ensures that the web service that connects to this instance of Dynamics is, is known and secure. And then we have our instant, U instance URL, which obviously you can see is our, our instance URL from there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We have a default plan, and I'll come back to our default plan. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only plan that we can have, um, but we do, do we do need to call a default plan. So we usually uh, tie that into our account health um, at the moment. And then what we do is we configure um, any associated plans. So these are our plans that will run as part of this monitoring configuration. So this is the, um, the standard version and we've called them duty built. Um, so they're built for a purpose. Um, but it's literally just a reference name that that plan will be called against. Okay. So we can have as many, uh, if we went down the, the professional version, we can have as many of these uh, plans as we deem necessary. You can have multiple configurations, uh, plans within multiple configurations. So it's, it's, it's as extensible as you, um, may need it to be. Um, so if I go back to my plan results, so in terms of, and we'll get into how this operates in a second, but in terms of the monitor configuration, that's what uh, manages the security, the handshake, and publishes the plans through to SCUM. So SCUM knows which plans it can, it can run. Every time a plan is triggered from uh, SCUM, and I'll get Christian to show you the, the SCOM side, I'm not a SCOM person, but we can then see, it will trigger a plan, and we can see the plan results here. Um, so if I go to uh, a failed plan, failed doesn't mean the plan's failed, failed means the state of the, uh, the plan results has got a failed status because that's what we defined it as. So just to talk you through a bit of what's on screen. so. That's the name of the record, uh, who was calling it, the status of this plan is completed, and it was failed because of the data that's been returned. Um, it's the test plan name, its progress is one because it's complete, and the result score is 66. The result score is 66 because we have 33 field steps which don't have data, and 33 contact steps which don't have data, okay? In this format, it probably doesn't mean uh, too much. You can go and investigate this. So we can see, for instance, that uh, Comtoso, so this is sample data, but Comtoso doesn't have a, a org URL. Uh, in fact, that's a limit of our notes, so we can't see more data in their notes. Um, but I can also go into the steps. So if I click in my step, This was bound to happen, wasn't it, Christian? Yeah, sure. This is. Uh, <laughs> well, this is if you Who put it in cloud, but there we go. <laughs> so we can see that 30, 33 entities were found to be missing data. So here are entities. Here are our organized uh, entity IDs or accounts. Uh, their IDs, and it tells us uh, what the uh, missing piece of data was. All of this data is the data that con gets consumed back into uh, SCOM for report reporting purposes. Okay. Um, if you're asking any questions, Christian, I don't know if you can see, but I can't see if anything comes up just in case. Oh, I'll get back to them uh, once, cool. once we're through this here. 
Brilliant. So that's a step within a plan. What I'm going to do now is show you how the plan um, is is called. Um, from So Christian can do it from Scrum, but I'll show you what gets called in terms of uh, Dynamics 365. And what we've what we've done is really try to leverage the strength of dynamics rather than go off and let's try to type in duty. Ah, this is this is my German keyboard, so here we go. Ah, <laughs> oh, let me get you the um, put me the Y. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I go into my account health um, plan, and basically it's a workflow. So as I say, we've tried to leverage, or we have leveraged the strength of um, Microsoft Dynamics rather than doing extensive um, development outside let's open that there we go okay I'm going to deactivate this just for a second um, but then we'll reactivate it but I just want to be able to show you uh, the functionality that's available to you as a, a standard feature set okay so I'm going to go into the configuration so within within our standard plan as a system admin you can go in and decide what you want to monitor within your four plans available to you. So this is the account. Let me maximize that actually. This is the account health. So we can say we want the account, we want to monitor where the account has basic information, true or false. Yeah, and we can toggle that on and off. Um, so same for primary contact. Does it have a primary contact? It must have a primary contact. Does it have an address? We want it to have an address. Um, company profile information, you may say, well, I'm not really worried whether it's got six and SOC codes and finance data, um, but we do need to, to have uh, contact preference information, especially around um, uh, marketing um, compliance, GDPR compliance these days. And then what we've allow, also allowed is a custom field. So if you've got a custom attribute on your account entity, you could put in the name of that, that field there. And that would also be monitored as part of the the um, the standard account health duty plan. Okay, so I'm just going to save and close that, and then I'm going to reactivate uh, that process. Okay, so if I just quickly show you through, so that's account health. If I just quickly show you through what you can do. Uh, out of the box with the monitoring module for activities. So the plan is the self-referencing plan. So that's just a standard step. So we want to monitor emails that, we know that are open for more than a day. We want to monitor incomplete tasks, incomplete phone calls, and incomplete service activities. So that's what you can do um, with the standard plan. I'll just show you the contact one and then the workflow one and then I'm going to quickly show you through uh, the professional pro license so again with the contact we want to know where the contacts about full name basic information missing address personal information invalid contact preferences and then you can have a custom field again okay <clears throat> in fact what I should show you let me just go back a step what we've done in terms of those sections on those uh, plans, uh, have you got it here? Yeah. So if I go to contacts, what we've done in terms of those uh, the ability to toggle on off those those areas within the contacts you want to monitor, we we've kept it to contact information. Um, so everything that's in contact information is toggled on and off. Um, so it matches the tabs within the contact that we've def defined that you should monitor as a an out of the box. So contact preferences, it's monitoring everything in that contact preferences. Um, and the same for account. So it will monitor based on the active accounts. Good old Fabricam. So again, account information, address, primary contact, uh, company information. So we go to details and then you have company information, company profile, contact preferences again, and description. So those are the boxes we've grouped that you can toggle on and off. So you're actually monitoring quite a bit of, of data to ensure that the quality and the 
completeness of your uh, data is as, as good as it can be. Okay, I'm just going to now show you the pro version. Uh, well, let me just go over to the other system. Uh, you can see that. Well, yep. that would here. Super. Thank you, Christian. So again, it's the same, same, absolutely same configuration. In terms of the plans, we now have, uh, we don't have duty. So these are fully accessible and configurable plans. So if I go to processes, um, and I'm just going to use just, the just account. The first one here. Yeah. Oh, it's there. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just going to show you through the account plan. I'm not going to show you through all of them. <clears throat> but uh, straight away, you'll notice that these are a lot more uh, complex in terms of the um, the, the steps um, within the, the workflow process. So for those of you that are familiar with um, workflows anyway, this this will make um, some sense. Um, in fact, let me deactivate that for a second. Okay, so within, um, I'm not going to try and um, teach you how to create a custom plan in, in this timeline, but basically you would um, have a start plan step, sorry, start plan, or you'd have a start step, and you can have multiple steps. So we've got a start step here, and we have a start step here. You can have as many start steps within your plan as you want to, um, and then you can have um, some good uh, clever functionality we're just using for this purpose of this plan a fetch count so within the fetch count uh, um, step of the the plan is that popped up on another screen Christian uh, yes I'll um, should have it somewhere here this one just try to click again uh, that one Super, thank you. Um, and again, without trying to go through too much detail, you build your um, your query, your fetch query, as a, an XML fetch. So you can use your advanced find to build your XML fetch. Make sure that you're monitoring or pulling back the relevant uh, data that you would want to monitor and pull back to SCOM. Um, and then we just tag it with a title of of what the the step is, um, and then we can. Um, state in our this is the text that gets returned into the note of the plan step so it's an account missing primary contact address details <clears throat> so it's fully customizable um, and in terms of the extended functionality available as part of uh, the professional version then you can do all these additional um, workflow assemblies in order in in part of your plan so you can do uh, some some common steps so we've built our common steps around accounts and fetch counts um, but you can do uh, some our devs were very um, pleased with the math functionality that they've built in so you can do some uh, clever math um, valuation within your query before you return results um, so it's ex it's as extensible as we think you might ever need. I'm always open to to new ideas and and feedback. But in terms of the the strength of this, in terms of monitoring, I don't think there's much you're going to find where you cannot monitor and port back to SCOM uh, what's going on within your system. So I'm going to reactivate that, Christian. And okay. Then if we go back to our duty plan. Let's go. Okay. Do you want to go back, or should I go over to SCOM now? Yeah, uh, go to scum absolutely minutes, yeah, just, just, just a couple of yeah. minutes on the left so uh and to allow some q a still so uh thanks um tom for the for the for the information or the introduction on the uh on the crm solution that's been in there so uh how does it look from the scum side actually so um if you have the overall overview here you will just see next to the to the services you have like for exchange exchange sharepoint and so on you will actually see the dynamics as well in here and with that we have the different uh, plans have been introduced as well discovered so the account activity uh, the account health activity health and workflow health in this case and with that also the uh, the plans and the alerting on that so if you would look at this right now here we all just get the information like two minutes ago there was an alert so uh, 
that uh, one of the plan was unpublished that was actually happening when he deactivated the plan. So, uh, and uh, now it's, it's this is going away. But if you look at the activity health, for example, we see here we have incomplete task, and that was actually the same we have been seeing uh, in in CRM on the plan results. So we just bring this immediately in here into the alert description, uh, so it can be can be taken on with a CRM administrator. Uh, there are other items like the um, the web request duration. That means actually the uh, the real user performance or end user performance on using dynamic CRM online. So uh, in that case, like uh, you get also the ability to measure the SLA. Uh, on that, obviously, if it becomes completely unavailable, then there's also an alert on that. And then we can see the the runtime of the different plans as well. How long it takes to to execute those test plans. So um, typically between zero and one second here, and this plan is computed, so this, this is fast. And uh, overall, this gives you the integration into that, what uh, Tom just has shown. All right, so um, that is uh, what we refer around, around Dynamics uh, Online. So, and it complements really uh, what, what's been available for monitoring for the off traditional Office 365 services, and uh, yeah, Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Exchange. And with that, let me just go back to the slides and uh, just have to skip a couple of those here. Um, if you have seen that, so and uh, I'll, I'll come up to a little summary here. So and uh, give you a bit, uh, talk a bit about what's coming, what we're working on. So uh, so first, important, the version 3.0 is available today. So you can go to the customer portal, download it. If you're an existing customer, please read the release notes. The release notes give you instructions how to upgrade from an earlier version. It is an in-place upgrade, so no deletion of management packs or uh, no complete reconfiguration of the management pack itself. Uh, when it comes to the integration, obviously, if you're using modern authentication, you will need to have so you will need to do some work on it. Also, work with your your Azure admins on that. But uh, we we try to make it as good descriptive as possible in the documentation. Otherwise, we also encourage to use our customer portal to submit their support request or questions. Uh, in the customer portal, there's an area where you can submit some questions or if you want to reach us by email, just use solution at nice.de or uh, just also christian.heidkamp at nice.de if you want to contact me directly. As I said, feedback is always welcome. Um, if you have uh, any uh, enhancements, requests, or suggestion what to improve, feel free to, to uh, mail us. There's already one question or one uh, question that came in. So um, around SharePoint, I've seen that uh, more than 20, like more than a quarter on those on the call actually use SharePoint and OneDrive extensively. So, and uh, then actually we uh, we have done uh, improvements on SharePoint. There's the request on a site quota monitoring. So currently we do not have site site quota monitoring in there. It is is this on our backlog for additional enhancement as well as more information on on uh, render capabilities and response time of specific SharePoints as well as monitoring a large number of SharePoint sites. So uh, also here we uh, run into throttling if we upload a, a large number of files to many different SharePoint sites. So uh, we also then um, is, uh, is available in one of the next version where we add uh, support for quota monitoring. Um, then there is a, is a question on the licensing. Um, the license is per, well, the, the base is the tenant, so it's a tenant-based license, and then we, we do not count your, your licenses per user one by one, but we categorize the tenant size in, in five different categories. So like either a small tenant, medium, large, very large, or like unlimited tenant. So this is like depending on how many mailboxes you have, or like how many licenses you actually have for uh, Office 365 and the specific service activated. So, uh, so you only pay for what you use in terms of uh, components. So, if you just require monitoring for Teams and SharePoint, 
you do not need to license Exchange at this point anymore. That was before different like in the 2.0 version, but now they accommodate that request that you can actually license only that solution that, that you need in this case. So, uh, um, and uh, the, as I said, there are different quantity breaks on the, on the, on the size. And if you need more information on, on pricing, it's, it's difficult to give in general because we have, depending on the region here you are, there's a different pricing for the region plus a subscription-based model and a perpetual license model that is a perpetual license plus uh, maintenance as well there's a, a, a um, subscription type of model available. So uh, with that I think um, we'll close up to the hour and I currently don't see any additional questions that come in uh, but as I say if you have questions feel free to post them or send them to us. We'll try to get answer as fast as possible as we try to and uh, I close the call and thank you all for taking the time and listening in today. Uh, thank you all and have a good rest of the week. Thank you and bye now.